Following the war, the country was further unsettled by a wave of bombings directed at prominent individuals. There's rampant inflation. Uh, there's unemployment. Uh, there's some major strikes. There's a massive general strike in Seattle. So you have foreign language, communists and socialists advocating for Bolshevism. Finally, there is violence. One of the targets was Attorney General Mitchell Palmer. Politicians and law enforcement officials demanded that action be taken. Palmer directed federal agents to round up any group advocating communist politics. Were they communists or were they the socialists? Probably not. They were probably anarchists who've been involved in bombings since the 1880s, but that sort of distinction's pretty subtle. Whenever they talk about the Palmer raids among historians, they're viewed as one of the very darkest moments in American history. And they truly are. Thousands of people were arrested, most of whom had absolutely nothing, nothing to do with radicalism. One of the problems is that Palmer gets so ahead of himself, he declares that he has, somehow this is very relevant today, he has evidence of a massive attempt to overthrow the government on May Day in 1920. There's going to be bombings, there's going to be assaults on buildings, you know, there's going to be people trying to take over the Capitol. May Day comes and goes. I'm sorry, it's just May Day. And everybody goes, Mr. Palmer, what is this all about? The ACLU was born of a civil liberties crisis, the Palmer Raids, around the time of World War I, where people who were thought to be communists were rounded up and deported without any due process of law. Well, we thought that was wrong. We thought that due process, meaning an opportunity to be heard, to show that you're not the person who the government thinks you are, is a